Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are studying cost-benefit analysis for public projects. So, this is part 3 of chapter 8. We are measuring the current benefits of public projects. I want you to know that in this part, we are starting measuring current benefits. In part 4, the next video, we are actually going to talk about valuation of human life, how we value human life. It sounds a little bit crazy. It sounded really crazy to me when I first heard, first heard about it. However, we need to unfortunately value human life, even though it's priceless, value human life to be able to deal with um, certain lawsuits and to value public projects if they're life-saving. So also, you should be watching part five, the last part of this series to understand the measure and current benefits because we are going to really touch those topics in that part. But I'm going to go back to the previous part. This was the this was our this was our case. We were talking about highway construction project as a public project and we learned about the cost of the high highway project in the cost benefit analysis so the benefits of having this highway is driving time speeds driving time saved so people now have access to a safe highway without any potholes or any mistakes in terms of construction therefore the total driving time saved for the first year is 500,000 hours by people also Lives saved by this safe highway is five lives fatalities. Okay, so how to how to value driving time speed saved and five lives saved in the economy? We're going to calculate the first year benefit by the sum of the value of these two things, and then we are going to use the present discounted value formula for an infinite sum that we learned in previous video part two. Chapter 8, Part 2, and calculate benefit over lifetime. So I want you to, let's go back to our case. So in this case, we are now trying to understand how to value driving time saved, 500,000 hours. What's the economic value of this? And also, how do we value human life? Let's get started, okay? So again, this is... Uh, the starting of the benefits of public projects two main benefits value of driving time time saved this is 500,000 hours and value of reduced fatalities we are uh, now facing with fewer uh, life losses okay so in this part we are going to talk about valuing driving time saved so for companies driving time saved for instance let's say I am Walmart you know I'm the Walmart CEO if my drivers can get from point A to point B at a faster rate, there is an economic value of that, right? For a producer, it, it's a decrease in cost. So the supply curve will shift to the right. And as a result, the total economic surplus will increase. So it's easy if we know the shape of supply and demand curves. This is a typical supply curve, demand curve, quantity of a good sold and the price. So look at this, supply is increasing if the cost of transportation uh, goes down. Supply increases, so the price of the product should go down as well as quantity of the product exchange and equilibrium goes up. Okay, this, is, this keeps happening, right? I try to draw something straight. We call this Freddy Krueger effect that I just made up. Uh, I, whenever I try to look, draw something straight, it happens. Okay, going back. Sorry about that. So it's easy if you have estimates of supply and demand in the output market. So for consumers, this is a little bit different. We need a measure of society's valuation of commuting time saved. So let me ask you, let's say you live in Austin. I lived in Austin. I went to school there, Austin, Texas. And some days traffic can be really heavy in that town. I live very close to almost my work and school. But some people travel one hour per way, right? So they have two hours of round trip. My commute in Corpus Christi from my residence to my work is about 10 minutes. In a bad day, very bad day, 12, okay? 
So 10 minutes, 20 minutes total versus 120 minutes. So how do I value that 100 minutes of my time? Okay, how can I value it? You can value it based on a wage rate because you could be working instead of just uh, sitting in traffic. So for consumers, we need a measure of society's valuation of commuting time saved. You can use market-based measures. That's the wages, which I was talking about. If I get paid, let's say $60 per hour, I am saving one hour and 40 minutes. That is, right, 60 and um, 40, $100, basically $100 saved in my pocket. All right, so we also have survey-based measures. This is called contingent valuation and also revealed preference measures. We are going to talk all of them, all of them one by one. The first one is the market-based measure to value time saved driving. So in a perfectly functioning labor market, you could cash out the value of the time savings. If I'm saving uh, one hour per day and I get paid $20 per hour, my savings would be $20 per day because I could be working instead of sitting in traffic. If one can freely choose the hours of work, right? Appropriate valuation of the time is the wage rate. However, I could be sitting in the traffic for an hour. However, my employer doesn't pay me per hour. Let's say I'm a salaried worker. So in that case, it's a little harder to cash out. So problems is that hours of work is lumpy and there are, there are non-monetary aspects of the job. I teach about this in labor economics class. This is the compensating wage differentials. There are some aspects of the job that are not valued in terms of money, but they are valuable to workers, okay? Second way to measure the time saved driving with the new improved highway is the survey-based measures. This is a contingent valuation. So you can ask people to value an option that they are not choosing. So if somebody asks me, how much would you be willing to pay if you could be at work in one minute? Okay, so from 10 minutes to one minute, it's a big jump. It's not a very crucial big one. But if it, wa if it was two hour commute, if I was commuting to work for two hours per day, then if they told me, hey, what about decreasing your commute time to 20 minutes? Now we are talking. Now I can tell them, you know what? I'm willing to give up this much money to have shorter commute. So in some circumstances, this is the only feasible method for valuing a public good. So especially for things that there are no function in market. So market-based wages measure can be used for the highway driving time save. But for some public goods, there's no obvious market price. For instance, to value saving a rare species of owl. Or Corpus Christi is a beautiful tourism town. We have turtles, sea turtles hatching. Lots of people get together. Conservationists come together. We save them. Temu CC, MIS, Mass, uh, Management Information System program actually designed an app called Strand, working with our uh, aquarium to help those turtles for the intake. Anyways, long story short, saving turtles, right? There is no free market wage for that. So you can ask people, this is contingent valuation is used whenever there is no free market um, or feasible method for valuing a public good. So again, there are problems with Contingent valuation, let's apply this. So in contingent valuation, isolation of issues do matter. Respondents value a public good more when it's only when it's the only one asked about it. So if they're like, well, what do you think about sea turtles, saving sea turtles? I can be like, okay, I am willing to pay $20 per year, right? So if you ask them one issue, Versus five issues together, sea turtles, night owls, um, bald eagles, then it becomes diluted. So order of issues matter. Respondents place higher values on public goods asked about. First, if you ask me about the sea turtles, I'm drawing a sea turtle here. So I may value that higher than, let's say, endangered cockroaches. I just made that up and this cockroach is already looking really bad. 
or bald eagles, you ask second, third, fourth, I'm going to put lower value to those. Embedding also matters. What does it mean? Respondents place roughly the same valuation on a public good regardless of the quantity. So you are basically, if you tell them, hey, how about saving 100,000 sea turtles versus 200,000 sea turtles or 100,000 or 150,000, which one? We are like, well, I'm paying 20 bucks. There are some problems associated with the contingent valuation that's obviously due to the survey design. Okay, not true valuation. Maybe people care about these rare species of cockroaches, but if you ask them first, they're going to be valued more. Okay, let's talk about revealed preference measures. Revealed preference measures basically let the actions of individuals reveal their valuation, not ask them. Okay, how much do commuters value reductions in commuting time is an example of revealed preference measure. So price differences, for instance, you know, you don't just ask them because this would be the previous one, right? How much would you be willing to pay? But you actually look at the market data. You look at the price differences between houses close and far from downtown. Okay. It might reflect the commuting time. So again, but treatments and controls may differ leading to bias in this case. So that's the caveat we need to know about little warning about revealed preference for instance two examples Everett is only four miles from downtown Boston while Lexington is 11 miles away average home price in Everett this is back in the day right $353,000 versus average home price in Lexington is more expensive so how is this possible some neighborhood closer to downtown it has cheaper homes. So you need to control for other properties of homes. Maybe these are like one bedroom, smaller homes without some desirable properties. These are larger homes with fireplace, with pool, with two dining rooms. I don't know, like all those great, great um school districts so it could be those kind of difference therefore we need to control for properties this is why you want to use regression analysis here okay so here's the way to solve problem of bias as i mentioned in practice this is a problem two homes are not identical right everett which is much closer to downtown has cheaper homes than lexington which has a little bit further down from downtown but more expensive homes so these houses are not not identical some differences can be observed accounted account it can, they can be accounted for with cross-sectional regression one solution is for the control for house characteristics this could be size of the land school district quality it could be safety around the house. It could be the size of the house, square footage. So lot size, number of bedrooms, square footage. But some features are hard to observe, such as granite countertops, uh, more modern appliances, not having gray floors because some interior designers are actually, they have started war against gray interiors, which they think is very vanilla. Okay, I'm watching a lot of HGTV. All right, so... You can decompose a sale, sales price by its attributes. This is called hedonic market analysis. If you remember the labor economics class, we talked about the compensating wage differentials and jobs with uh, negative attributes. We talked about hedonic uh, market equilibrium. So in order to provide a more convincing estimate of the value of the saving, we also use a quasi-experimental approach, okay? So let's talk about the empirical evidence, valuing time savings. So one quasi-experimental approach reveals that the value of time saved by Deakin and Sonsteel. So during the oil crisis of 1970s, so in 19. 74 we had OPEC crisis I covered this topic in my principles of microeconomics classes 
So price of oil spiked up. The government imposed price ceilings on gasoline for large gas stations, but not independent gas stations. So price of gasoline is rising, right? For instance, today prices, let's say price of gasoline is $3. So then it spiked to $10. I'm just making it up, right? But the government says all those Large gas stations cannot charge more than $5. Then what happens? Large gas stations only have so much gas to go around. But this rule doesn't apply to independent gas stations who can sell the gas at whatever price they want. When I say independent, these are smaller gas stations, mom and pop style uh, gas stations. So what happened was that long lines formed at these cheaper corporate gas stations, right, chain. Each example, at Chevron stations in California, gas was approximately 54 cents in 2019 dollars lower with an average wait time of roughly 14.6 minutes. So you go to a gas station, you wait for 15 minutes almost before you get gasoline. This is unbelievable to me because we go to gas station, pull up, there's never a line uh, except for... Which gas stations? Sam's Club and Costco gas stations always have lines in the United States because their gas prices are 10 to 20 cents cheaper. Okay, so 54 cents cheaper gasoline, 15 minute wait. So the mean purchase was around 10.5 gallons. All right, so trade off is waiting for 14.6 minutes. To save how much? $5.67. How did we find it? 10.5 gallons bought times 54 cents saved, right? You get $5.67 saving. So waiting for one hour, you would save actually $23.3, right? If you if you wait 14.6 minutes, almost quarter quarter of an hour, you save. $5.67, roughly multiply this by four. It's going to be a little bit more than four, but it is the waiting for one hour. You would save $23.3. This is very close to the average hourly wage in 2019. So as you can see, people can calculate their value of time savings properly. So if I am, let's say, an attorney, I make $500 per hour. I'm a lawyer. I make $500 per hour. Every hour I don't work, I lose $500. Am I going to care about saving $23.30? I don't care. I'm going to go to the expensive gasoline gas station. How about if I am a teenager getting paid, let's say, $10 per hour working at a... Working at a fast food restaurant, $10. So I am surely going to wait in the line for this cheaper gas, okay? Again, in this part, we are not done yet. We just learned about how we could, in different ways, calculate the value of time saved. We talked about three different methods. We talked about revealed preference measures. We talked about contingent valuation. We also talked about market wages. So in the highway construction, we are more than likely use highway wages to calculate the save time by saving 500,000 hours a year. Next, we need to calculate the value of human life and I'll see you in part four. Bye everyone.